welcome to farming in the satellite era. Uh, back in the day, you used to have to use these all the time for everything, you know, steering, levers, all this sort of stuff. Well, now you don't really need to do that because we've got satellite navigation, which is pretty awesome. That's this thing here. We've got all your monitors here that tell you exactly what's going on, and it's really just flicking switches. There's lots of switches, lots of buttons, um, unlike uh, more switches and more buttons up there, unlike uh, what it was um, only a few years ago. So, um, and farming's gotten a lot bigger too, so machines, this machine behind us is 80 feet, which is you know, over 30 metres um, in one single sway. But yeah, look mum, no hands. <laughs> so it's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, and like there's a paddock that uh, I'm just finishing now and you can see the different, uh, you can see that I've already gone down this line here. You see the different um, images of it. There's the paddock all done. And you see all these little white things here? Little white patches. Well, that's that water over there. We're actually a really weird um, landscape here. So you'll see that it all looks fairly flat, but it's not level. Uh, and uh, there's these melon holes and you'll see that there's a melon hole there it's not quite uh, wet but still fairly muddy which causes a heck of a lot of problems on your machine so as much as you don't have to do so much work nowadays there's still a lot of work so that's why your hands always look like this because paddy melons grow and they get tangled around each of the points and you press wheels and then mud gets stuck on there and you've got to get in there and get it all out and it is a Job. So still plenty of work in the um, satellite age, which is kind of hilarious. So you need someone who can just sit here and not do anything, not press any buttons. So you want a dumb person, but then you need a really smart person to be able to handle all of this sort of stuff. Then you need a really physically able person to be able to... So today really sucks. So we've been working like crazy around the clock, making sure that this massive big planter gets all the seed from the box into the ground and we get a good wheat crop. Now this is what we call the five mile. It's a huge paddock. It used to be about 5,000 acres. We've cut it up now. But each run, uh, each run is a bit over two kilometers. So that's one run up and of course then another two kilometers to get back. With this machine being 100, oh, sorry, 80 foot wide, uh, every single time that you end up coming back, because um, you leave a, leave a gap because it's such a wide machine, you'll see that there's a, a big gap there behind, um, behind me. And then, so each time that you are across, you're 160 feet away from where you were last time. So in the dark, if anything goes wrong, you have no idea because you can't actually see where you were previously because it is so far away. So in the dark last night, Literally, my wheels fell off. Um, not a good thing, not a good thing. Uh, so, well, wheels can't fall off because it's a tractor machine. Now, the reason we use tractor machines um, is, of course, the melon holes, uh, there's mud, and uh, it's the best way of actually transferring the strength of your machine. Um, this one is well over 500 horsepower, transferring all of that horsepower down into the ground, and that's uh, this whole track mechanism here. However, the whole hub actually came out, and there it is there. Um, nothing we could have done about it, unfortunately. Hopefully she's a warranty job because it's a pretty major catastrophe. Because if this is not going, um, in the vital days uh, of May, the wheat has to go in an exact spot. I mean, anyone that's planted anything knows that, you know, there's a certain little window where you have to plant um, a variety of crop. Well, it's very intense with wheat. It's a certain window, each variety of wheat, because there are hundreds of varieties of wheat, each variety of wheat has to go in a certain window. And that's why we do this moisture seeking planting where we've got this strange, big, massive rig that actually goes deep down. And um, you'll see it's quite dry, but down into the soil, several inches down um, is where we're putting the little seed. Problem is, it's going to rain on Friday, so we needed uh, several thousand hectares planted. Ain't nothing happening with that on the ground there and that there. So instead of uh, doing what I should be, we're waiting for parts to fly up from Melbourne. So I'm going to go burning today. What does burning mean? Well, you'll see all this trash that's here. Now, we keep that trash. It's called stubble from the previous year, and that shades the ground, and that's how we can hold onto our moisture. It's kind of like having a garden mulch, um, so keeping the soil shaded and protected. 
Um, it's really thick in some parts, so we actually have to burn it, uh, believe it or not. Um, and also it does carry disease. So if we're going to get this rain coming very shortly, um, we need to make sure that we, uh, we get rid of it in some parts. And it's not the stubble that really we're getting rid of, it's the, the grasses that's really thick in between it. And um, there's none of that uh, grass here, except I suppose you can see that kind of that uh, lighter coloured stuff over there, that, not lighter, probably darker coloured stuff that the stubble, of course, is a white colour. Um, and then it's more the grass over there that's been sprayed out, but um, is may clog up the machines after the rain that comes, if that makes sense. So it's always a billion things to do on a farm, and it's very complicated. Um, I should stop jabbing and get back to work. No, you're not seeing things. Um, there is live fire behind me. Yes, I have a 15 metre uh, plow or harrows behind me which is on fire um, that's why I'm sweating uh, but it's deliberately it's to get rid of this this is what we call feather top it's um it's a brand new weed which is coming to Australia lots of bad weeds coming into Australia again um, some of them could have come in hundreds of years ago or hundred years ago back in the old mattresses because mattresses used to um, just be full of straw and uh, whatever they could find so after Mattresses were made in India or Argentina. Of course, we got all those plants. As soon as the mattresses were chucked out, um, outside of towns and cities or wherever they were chucked, um, well then, of course, the weeds would grow and, of course, now they've gone over the massive big continent of Australia. Um, and this weed has now come to us. It's, um, you can see it absolutely shocking out there in the stubbles. So we have to burn it so that it looks more like that. Um, not always uh, do you have to do this. It's really only if you have this thick feather top and you can see that that's kind of impenetrable for the planter. Um, and you would have seen the zero-till planter that I've been driving um, the last few days. That's now broken. Really hope that um, John Deere can, uh, can get that fixed because we have rain coming on Friday and Saturday. Now that means that everything is going to change. How we plant is going to change, how we do things, what hours we can work all changes because the moisture binds together the straw and you can't get through it. Everything blocks up. Um, and that's why we have to burn this stuff to get rid of it because by the time we start the planter again, um, uh, that moisture would have come because of the rain Friday, Saturday and we've now got to clear this. However, before the rain comes, there's a small window where the air is dry enough for us to be able to burn this stuff to be able to get through it. So farming is constantly ever changing. Um, it's <laughs> It's one of those games where you know you've got to have an immense amount of knowledge and that usually comes from generations upon generations of doing things that's why uh, farming is the one job in the world where uh, it really does go from a parent to child and has done for, for thousands of years um, because you need that huge bank of knowledge because things can occur once in a lifetime and you need to be prepared for the next lifetime and that's where you draw on that knowledge from your grandparents or uh, even uncles and aunts and neighbours as well so there's that generational knowledge that goes on. This burning that we're doing now, the stubble burning, we haven't done, I'm not a big fan of it, um, of course it releases carbon into the atmosphere, um, it does kill um, a tremendous amount of things and that's one of the reasons that people do do it is because it does kill uh, some of the diseases that, that are stored inside your leaf matter on top because the leaf matter on top remembering that's just um, like mulch which is how we farm in Australia now because remember most of Australia is actually dry land farming which means we rely holus bolus on what comes from the sky um, thank you Rainbow Servant we can't do anything about that but what we can do is how we farm and we keep this uh, mulch on top um, to be able to keep the moisture in the ground and that's as farmers all we can do is conserve moisture we can't control how much moisture comes from a rainbow servant um, but at the moment this is now a problem so we've got to get rid of the problem again don't like doing it um, because of the, the many drawbacks of burning anything you can do but yeah if you're driving around Australia now and you're seeing big burnt patches um, it's actually stubble burning it is not uh, not bushfires um, a lot of uh, stubble burning does have to occur in the southern parts of Australia, not so much in the northern parts, because um, of there they've got uh, you know, different Mediterranean climates down there. Um, but this year, unfortunately, is something that we have to do here, which is a bit shitty. Anyway, that is the game of modern farming. Stress, because the live fire only a few metres behind me. <laughs> 
this is pretty cool. Uh, so, I spent the whole day from 8 this morning until about 9.30, 10 tonight, uh, driving um, a tractor, a little MX uh, case, with fire and burning and full on, yes. It was like a two and a half thousand acre paddock and, and burnt it. Anyway, um, in that time, John Deere have been amazing and they have given us a brand new tractor and it arrived in the middle of the night. So I went home, had a shower, which I needed, and then um, have come back. But of course it's a brand new tractor and this is like insanely flash. Like, yes, it has a two way, but it has a different garden system and it's it's got four tracks instead of two tracks. Um, hence, quad track. Um, but uh, the craziest thing, and like this is what I never, never ceases to amaze me. Like I'm doing this live thing right now, talking on the internet to like one person who's watching, hopefully. Maybe, no one's watching. But anyway, um, the incredible thing is, is that I'm in the middle of 45,000 acre station, 100 kilometers north of Gundawindi, like, you know, 14 hours, whatever, north of Sydney, and um, I'm talking on the internet. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, anyway, what is even more crazy is I couldn't work out this new guidance system, right? It's a brand new guidance system, which means that, you know, no hands, the, the whole fucking, this whole thing drives itself. Um, anyway, oh, what's YouTube clips? from some guy in America, because this is a new auto track guidance system, it's brand new generation four, and I now learn how to program it all. Like, how crazy is that? Oh my God. Anyway, that's just insane. But what's more insane, and like, yes, okay, brand new tractor, it's worth like half a million dollars, it's 600 horsepower, it is so luxurious, it's very, very flash. And it's doing everything, doing everything. Look at this, planting, because you know, it's probably gonna rain tomorrow night and I've gotta get everything in. But no, there is a disaster. This little bitch here, Jess, sleeping down there, my co-pilot, ate my lunch, dinner, whatever. My four o'clock in the morning snack, because when I went to fill the seed bin up, um, yeah, anyway, fucking little bitch got back and then my lunch was all eaten. So now my dog ate my lunch. Anyway, oh, that'll learn me. It's all very exciting. So yes, if anyone is watching, hello. This is the first time I've ever done live. It's very, um, very different. So, uh, we had a bit of rain this morning, which kind of sucks. But when you're in a beast like this with uh, quad tracks, which, you know, quad tracks means four tracks. That's this whole assembly here, which is phenomenal. Like 600 horsepower is amazing. Didn't realize that, you know, like I would have if I was in a shitty wheel tractor, you know, like we used to have in the olden days. I didn't realize that it was as wet as it is. So this is our huge big planter here. She's 24 meters wide or 80 feet. Now you might just notice wheels and mud don't mix. So slightly, um, yeah, bogged up all these, all these wheels. But as you can see, the tracks on that tractor just keep going didn't even slip like there's got monitors in there to tell you um how much slippage is on there and it's like two percent or zero just amazing technology so yeah my other tractor broke down um i didn't break it it just happened and then john deere they just turned up in the middle of the night with this new one it's amazing and i love them and then i worked all night and uh then we had this little bit of a rain shower which is annoying because yeah wheels don't go around if only we had tracks on the whole thing but no there's a lot of wheels on there and um if you get mud in there of course it pops the wheels and i don't want to be changing no wheels and of course you know planting in mud it shears off the ground and creates an impenetrable layer for the little tiny seeds so there's plenty of reasons why we can't uh keep planting but all i've been doing the last half an hour is just playing with that tractor it's so so beautiful but the other thing is it gives us some time to do lots of repairs and little tiny things that you wanted to do like clean up around the machine and make sure that everything's nice which is what i'm about to do now yeah then i'm gonna have a sleep because last time i was in bed was 28 hours ago probably wondering what is it that the human does when they're driving these new satellite tractors well 
They have to navigate around melon holes like this here. So that's when you pull the steering wheel. Suddenly the auto track goes off and you're actually driving around these massive big lakes because as much as this is a machine that is like amazing, um, nothing ain't gonna go through that lake. And of course you don't wanna take your bearings and all that sort of stuff in your time machine all the way through. Uh, now you see that he's having a conniption over here. He's saying that you're 48 meters off your line. Once you go back to your line, you'll see that I'm almost at the white line there. Then I press my auto track and then the tractor takes back over. You see it says active. And then he's now, that's my little tractor there. He's now swathing exactly where it's supposed to. And you'll see this is how many centimeters I'm off. Uh, when I'm within a few centimeters, it goes green. So it's telling I'm only three centimeters, two centimeters, one centimeter off. Isn't that phenomenal that, you know, we're talking about a huge big machine hundreds of kilometers away from the satellites but the satellites isn't navigating at all within a few centimeters now you'll see that there's a little bit of overlap you'll see that darker blue here and you'll see there's an underlap over here which is the whiter so what I'll do is I need to go left a fraction so I just press that and then I do a new uh, line which means that I've got a little bit of overlap here a little tiny bit of underlap here so I'm a few centimeters off so I go back a couple of centimeters, press my new line, and now I think I'm spot on. So you go, humans are still important. They've got to press a few buttons to make sure the satellite is exactly spot on within a few centimeters. But it's phenomenal, phenomenal that, um, you know, by eye, humans can be pretty good. We usually, like I know at my best, you know, when, when a male um, human is at their best between 19 and 25, I knew that back then I could do about 20 centimetres of overlap. That was as good as I could do over, you know, two and a half, three kilometre runs within 20 centimetres when we're talking about a 20 metre wide machine. This, by satellite, does it within one and two centimetres and zero centimetres. You'll see that there it's saying that it's zero centimetres out. Everything is running perfectly, which is great. And I'll get back to um, doing what I do best, which is watching the machine and watching out for those melon holes. But um, yeah, humans still important, but I just can never get over how incredible the technology is in farming that we can have this such big gear all run by satellites up there. Pretty phenomenal stuff, I say. And all in air conditioned luxury. So the activation codes came through, so I put them in and because uh, of course it's all IP, you know, like you've got to pay Mr. John Deere for his IP because it's a lot of money um, that they must have to pay to do all of this incredible stuff. So the activation codes have come in, which means I can put it in gear and get going. It literally is a case of putting it in gear, putting your revs up and she does everything. So the tractor's doing everything itself. And then I press this button here, which says auto. And you'll notice that now it says green active. And there I am, there's my little tractor. And away I go, I'm now doing exactly what I'm supposed to. You'll see that it's blue already. That's because we were trying out before um, how to do this and uh, couldn't get the codes working. Um, but uh, so I've got to follow this line along and then eventually get to the point where well, you know, down here where we actually, that blue line stops and uh, we didn't actually plant that little bit. So I've got to wait till I get down to there and um, be planting again. But that's, yeah, modern planting in Australia. It's pretty easy and of course, no hands, it all does it itself. But the great thing about this machine here is it's one monitor that I have to worry about and everything that I need to see is on this one monitor. Of course, there's my C box monitor up there. Unless that beeps at me, I don't need to concern myself. The other thing that I've got to worry about, um, and that's what's great about my Captain Kirk chair, it's like I'm in Star Wars here, is just being very, very comfortable to be able to turn around, just have to glance where I'm going because um, of those melon holes. You know, we don't have trees in the middle of fields. Uh, that's why I think, you know, a lot of people do get concerned when they look out the window of an aeroplane driving over and say, oh, there's no trees down there. Well, we put them in clumps, they're called shade belts. So that's obviously much more effective for animals. You've got single trees out there, not so effective for animals on um, cropping country. So you've got your shade clumps, that's where all the trees are, that's where all your native animals exist. Very part, very important part of the ecosystem to be able to keep balance in your fields. Um, but yeah, we don't have individual trees out, so you don't have to worry about crashing into an individual tree, just those melon holes. 
The main thing that you're gonna be doing is looking backwards when you're driving these tractors, and it's looking at that huge big machine there, making sure the tires are all good, making sure the points are all working, making sure there's no busted hoses, hydraulic hoses, um, air hoses. You're really just making sure that everything is optimum because the machines are all running themselves. <laughs> the robotic technology has taken over. Um, but it's still incredible that you, you must have a human being to make sure that all the robotic stuff, all the satellite stuff, is working the way it should. You can't, um, you can't farm without the human. <laughs> it's the one job that I know will always have have a human involved, um, which is pretty pretty important. That and of course hugs. You need a human for a hug. Even a teddy's not that good. You need, you need a real human for a hug. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. That's that's how we do things out here. I hope uh, you learned a few things. And um, if you did, go and share it around. It's really important that people understand that. What we think about farming is not quite exactly how farming is, and of course farming in Australia is very different to farming in the rest of the world. We don't have the snow and the winters, and a lot of people think, oh, you know, how terrible. They lock animals in barns and all this sort of stuff for months and months and months, and it's beautiful to share um, videos of these cows running free after spending whole lifetimes in barns. That doesn't happen in Australia. So I think it's really important that we understand that farming in Australia is unique, it's different, it's clean, it's green, it's phenomenal, and it's very, very high tech. Which, you know, can be a little confusing at times when you don't have the codes for the satellites. Like today.